What's going on reef builders? Thanks for joining me for another video from the reef builder studio. Today, we really want to showcase this fantastic peninsula aquarium that is just packed with corals. We did some work on it about a year ago, kind of uh, we reset the red dragon acropora and we grafted a couple acros. So we've talked about this before about certain staghorns will grow really tall and have a, like a nice explosion of growth at the top. So we just cut out the middle and glued it back down. As you can see, that stag is doing good. Uh, but before we uh, dive into the corals, I want to tell you a little bit about the equipment. So it's good to see you guys again and uh, let's get started. already a bunch of videos about this tank but we're just going to do a quick run through of what this is so this is a six foot water box uh, peninsula style aquarium I think it's a 7225 um, high clarity glass we took the lids off you know for, for just uh, to enjoy the tank a little bit more aesthetically um, but one thing that we're really proud of is you'll notice in the entire aquarium there's virtually no equipment visible no nozzles and all the flow is restricted back here to two mp60s on both sides of the aquarium. Now I know you guys have heard of, about gyre pumps but that was named after a style of water flow called gyre flow. So these are programmed in such a way to just one pump will push really strongly down one end of the tank and it'll create kind of a loop or a gyre and then after about five to ten minutes the other one will kick on and kind of do the same. Um, one of the things I really loved about this aquarium um, is actually the stand. Um, I'm not sure if you can get these anymore but originally the water box peninsula had doors on both sides and um, as a gearhead um, this is just something that we really really enjoy there's no tricks under here no controller um, auto top off is provided by a float valve we've got a max spec air aqua duo protein skimmer uh, calc reactor a little bit of filter socks here that don't do that much but they help uh, reduce the work that the protein skimmer has to do and then all the mineral replenishment is provided by a four pack of Ecotech uh, Versa dosing pumps. And they're just dosing uh, Brightwell Aquatics, calcium, alkalinity, buffer, plus a separate little uh, reservoir of Acropower. Um, so no tricks in here. Uh, I think the alkalinity usually rides around eight or nine, calcium right at 400, magnesium about 1250 to 1300. Um, that's where we like to keep it. I know some people get really fixated on uh, keeping levels hyper stable, but we do definitely have swings. So there was a period of time there where uh, we were struggling to keep the calcium up. Uh, but once we finally got caught up, um, we were able to maintain that. Um, as far as like maintenance of this aquarium, uh, I think about once a week, I'll kind of put the return pump on feed mode and uh, do about 30 mLs of Red Sea Reef Energy AB+. Um, other than that, the only real important different thing that we're doing Doing since um, about a year ago uh, we were keeping on top of the nitrates but now we're dosing phosphates uh, about once or twice a week uh, in order to not maintain any particular level uh, because after about a week to a uh, 10 days, if we don't dose anything, it all goes to zero. But we like to see the nitrates around five to 10 PPM. And when we do dose some phosphates, we will give it a little spike, probably up to like 0 0.05, sometimes 0 0.1. And that will be consumed within a few days. As for the lighting, you'll see there's also a similarly kind of minimal aesthetic where there's nothing hiding, you know, touching the edges of the aquarium. So we've got just one bar attached to this side pole right here and supported on the end. And we're still using the same uh, Radeon Gen 4 Pros that uh, we started this aquarium with. We've got four of them. Um, everybody always asks about lighting and the best way I can describe it is we have 
12 hours of, of daylight or, or of illumination and uh, we'll generally have three time points where we'll about two to three hours will be full on blues plus UV. Sometimes I'll turn the blue channel just a little bit lower than the royal blue, violet and ultraviolet. Um, and then the second time point, turn up the blue, kiss it with a little bit like five to 10% of red and green about 30% of warm white and like up to 10% of uh, cool white. And that's gonna be kind of our daylight spectrum, which will peak to just a little bit more white light after a few hours. And then we just reverse that on the way down. So we have a really nice period of kind of fluorescent blue colors um, in the morning, a good balanced daylight spectrum during the middle of the day for about five to six hours. And then it tapers back down to blue, deep blue and mostly mostly ultraviolet light. So that was just a little speed through to the maintenance of this aquarium as far as our dosing, um, our nutrients, our feeding, our light regime. If you have any additional questions about those, go ahead and pop them down in the comments below before we dive into uh, the corals and the livestock in this particular aquarium. Um, as far as water changes, you know, you'll notice that uh, our nitrates and phosphates is something that we add almost once or twice a week, at least once a week. And um, we do water changes maybe around every six to eight weeks just to siphon out some of the detritus that will build up in certain areas of the aquarium and also to uh, replace it with uh, slightly fresher water right so we're dosing so much calcium buffer and magnesium that over a period of time after about two months we see the salinity rise about one to two parts per thousand and we like to ride around 35 to 36 ppt but when it starts getting 37 and 38 that's when we know it's time to do a water change and uh, we use the two little fishies accuracy to do generally about a 30% water change. Um, but yeah, for us, water changes is partially just to kind of reduce the salinity, uh, usually just to kind of polish up the sump and suck out some detritus. So it's not you know, the detritus removal, it's not nutrient removal, it's really just kind of to keep uh, everything as spick and spam as possible. There's a ton of corals in here, but there's actually fewer than there was when we did a good update of this tank about a year ago. Um, it was starting to get really crowded and there were some weedy corals that needed to be uh, put in check. So um, right next to the Red Dragon, we had another kind of light brown bottle brush acro. It wasn't just really adding that much to the aquascape and it was breaking um, or blocking the, the pathway through this mommy right here, um, which we really like to have for our fish. And uh, the population consists of mostly surgeon fish, just because they're so reef safe and lots of colors, pretty hardy, not picky. So we've got a Tomini, Convict, Purple, a Regal Blue, and then two yellows, a Purple, and a Gem Tang. Um, oh, there's also a pair of Wild True Proculas, just one of my favorite fish, and I love being able to enjoy these um, from my desk. And just very recently, I did a Bristletail File Fish um, to help knock back some of the Aptasia that we've been kind of uh, working on manually all this time. But before you go and uh, comment on how bad our zebra soma tangs look, man, I just, I don't even know what's going on. If you go to a lot of public aquariums, they almost always have troubles with their regal blue tangs and their yellow tangs with some fin erosion. And uh, I don't know what it is. We feed a variety of foods, add plenty of trace elements. Um, the gem tang is almost finless despite having awesome color. The purple tang is practically flawless. One of the yellows is just perfect perfect outline while the other one is starting to erode a little bit on the top. So um, this is definitely one of those mysteries I hope to solve in the future, but right now um, we're just kind of uh, suffering through it. Um, uh, the only other life forms, uh, higher life forms in here was a recently added a really nice pair of cleaner shrimp. If you haven't had cleaner shrimp in, in a mixed reef tank before or in a long time, they just really add a splash of colors with their bright white antennas uh, poking out from the rock work. And um, the handful of abalone. So I want to say there's like two or three used to be small ones, but now they're probably getting close to three inches. All right, so I think we got uh, most of the things handled for this reef tank. 
And if you're surprised by the lack of bells and whistles, I'm telling you, man, the fundamentals, um, if, once you nail those down, it really allows you to pay attention to what's really going on in the reef instead of programming your tank or constantly fixing, fixing these gadgets and doodads. So there is no controller, there's no CO2 scrubber, there's no algae scrubber, um, there's no calcium reactor, but since we're adding so much uh, mineral additives is definitely something I want to look at uh, for this tank but currently um, we just have a really nice system with the dosing and the water changes to bring the salinity back down that uh, don't see the need to fix too much so thanks for sticking out this long now let's talk about some of the really nice corals in this tank initially there's kind of four bombies but it really feels like three we're gonna go bomby by bomby and talk about some of the corals and some of the work that we've done to them um, this is one bombie that consists of a couple pieces of lace rock and a handful of pieces of real live rock in here and that's all the rock that's in this tank it's either lace rock or legacy live rock that we started with dry um, one of the challenges with this bomby is we kind of have the rocks kind of piled kind of like a teepee and i think it's that abalone once in a while just kind of gets underneath and they're really strong and they scoot a rock so we've had a couple tumbles here nothing really dramatic um, but while i was away uh, two of the uh, styloph fell into the bubble coral and you know, burned their tips a little bit but uh, this mommy right here is dominated mostly by four different style forests and one um, Palaustrea really looks similar until you cut it. It's got a really dense skeleton and that's one I collected myself. We ripped out a lot of the bird's nest. I love bird's nest. I love Seriatopora, but it grows so fast. It's just disproportionate to the aquascape of the whole aquarium. So if you're really successful with Seriatopora, whether like the green polyp bird's nest or just a nice solid pink, um, it's just a matter of time before you're gonna to have to reset those. So I've shifted a little bit more towards the stylophores. Um, they grow really fast, um, but definitely a lot more manageable. They don't tend to capture a bunch of funk inside of them. So um, let's see, what else do we have that's cool in here? We've got a nice green uh, weeping willow leather coral, uh, red polyp on green branching cyphastria. This guy is right at the limit of how much light he wants to receive. So we have um, some samples in other tanks they're a little bit more shaded and it's just really brilliant uh, green with some red polyps and then um, over here kind of accenting this whole beautiful end view of the aquarium um, we've got a really nice jason fox rasha rampage if you've never grown that coral it's one you definitely have to you know have some experience with in your reef aquarium career at some point and then uh, something that's really kind of finally coming together, a handful of different moon brain corals. Um, I think Fascination Favia and a little bit of Platy Gyra mixed in. And then the only other thing that somehow I'm not really sure how this made it into the tank because I don't remember adding it on purpose. We've got a, just a nice grove of purple discosoma shrooms, just solid purple, lavender blue shrooms that are really starting to fill in in this aquarium and definitely uh, dosing nutrients and giving it the Reef Energy AB Plus has helped some of those lower light, lower energy corals to gain a lot more coloration, such as the Space Invader Pectinia, the Rasha Rampage, um, the Flower Pot, and especially especially the shrooms. This middle bommy is by far like the accent piece of the whole aquarium. I really do love how this bommy is a little bit shorter so we can enjoy it on the end, but it really kind of breaks things up when it's low, then high, then kind of middle range. Um, this is made up of one very large cat's paw acropora, just kind of stand on end. And on top, you can see it's mostly SPS corals, but we have them grouped a little bit, right? So we have um, the Oregon blue tort with the blue hoaxamai with the yellow tip stag. So those are a little bit grouping. We've got two little stylos. Um, accenting and playing off of each other a little bit and then uh, some torch corals right here uh, adding some movement to the aquarium um, alongside the flower pots these are frag gone frag grown goniopora and i still remember buying those thinking there's no way i'd ever grow them um, we did end up pulling out the candy floss that was sitting right here um, it just got too big after we fragged it so now it's spread out through some other aquariums um, we've got some bizarro cyphastria and then just hit it and you know just 
out of direct light. It's a really nice uh, green mouth red Blastomusa Merletti that I've been kicking around in my tank since 1999. This side of the Bami is equally impressive. We, we've actually had to remove some corals because it was getting a little choked up inside. So you see there's a kind of a newer uh, cavity right here between this kind of acro and this kind of acro. This is the Red Dragon that we had completely restarted uh, just at the end of last summer, so about a year ago. And this is um, kind of a blue tip green bottle brush. And I remember it was, I glued it next to the Red Dragon and it fell over, but it was stayed in place. I was like, you know what? I just kind of pushed it in a little deeper. And now it's just a really nice contrast of like this teal blue green next to the pink Red Dragon. That makes me really, really happy. We've got the super blue um, Acropora hoaxami, the hardline hokey that I collected in Australia. And deep down inside, there's some Leptastria. Um, I think it's Pinky the Bear style acro. And then finally, something that's really started taking off probably because of the nutrients is we've got some nice Nice patches of zoanthids here. So this is the old school, just orange on orange, bam, bam. Um, we got some Rasta zoanthids and then some eagle eyes right here. But let's go back to the other side of the uh, Bami and just see the transition from one to the other. One of the standout pieces in this aquarium is definitely gonna be this, this shelf right here created by, it's a grafted Monopora Capricornus, but uh, it's lost all the green and the red has just completely taken over. And this is one of those things I, this is why I'm a little bit salty about grafted corals in general. Um, but right now I'm literally using it as part of the aquascape and I keep cutting it back when it starts overshadowing or get a little bit too large. But right now it's creating a beautiful platform for, I think it's called the Slime Time uh, Monopora Digitata. Once again, you know, we, we want to see a great mix of red and green, but 80% of the branches are all green, uh, 10 to 20, 10 to 15% of them are all red. And there's just a few select branches that are red and green. That came on a tie and I actually glued some frag plugs underneath it to make like little legs. Um, so that's why it's elevated a little bit and looks separate. Um, it makes actually for a really good accent, but I also believe um, that this style of stacking on top of another coral keeps the monopora alive underneath and it create, prevents you know, aggression between the coral that is sitting on top of another coral. So that transitions to kind of a mini balmy. It's not much of a balmy really. It's just two rocks that have a handful of corals on them. So here we have the immortal tort and I I love how it's going up this way and sideways towards the middle of the tank. So I think a, another year, we're gonna have a really full medium branch staghorn coral sitting right there. Really, really awesome piece. You'll see on the bottom, you know, we've got an assortment of corals that have just sat there so long that they became totally encrusted. Uh, here we have three different types of Cyphastria, kind of a gold monopora. This monopora has been kind of uh, irritated by some aptasias around it. Um, we've tried to hit them manually, but they're so deep in the rock, um, nothing is really gonna get at them other than um, the bristletail filefish that we recently added. Um, but this side of the tank is a little bit more for oddballs. So we've got a really nice colony of branching kind of Pora Harita. It's another one I collected. I call that one the metal head um, because it really looks kind of like devil horns. And that is one of those corals. It is firmly gray and on its own, it's never really gonna shine or be really crazy to look at. But when you see the very regular branches of all the other corals, and then you see this guy right here, that's kind of reticulating, um, it just really adds a nice contrast. As you can see, there's been a lot more emphasis placed on this half of the Bommies. I probably put more attention and work over here, um, probably because it's a little bit more shady over here. And this is kind of where we put all the oddballs. Um, so we got the metal heady kind of pour on the other side, but a beautiful, just branching orange uh, Samacora. And you know, it looks orangish in daylight, but when it starts getting a little bit bluer, it is fluorescent orange. Um, this is one of the rainbow uh, flower pots that grew out of this tank and we've been moving it around, but when I moved it over here, it was getting a little bit less light and seemed to color up a lot more. So now we have a lot more definition between the green tentacles and kind of the red pinkish base of the colony. And that's just getting better and better over time as we're just slightly tweaking our nutrients and our trace element additives. Um, we've got a limelight uh, hydnophora in here. Um, this is a nice table acro that I got from, it's kind of a bushy table, so not like a perfect table. I got that from Keith, um, at Reap Bum. Thank you very much, Keith. And uh, last but not least, we got a Space Invader Pectinium. Now this guy used to be on the other side, but just like the name implies, man, these things just grow so big, so fast, I had to put it in the corner. And this Ghani actually serves to kind of protect and shield this guy from the flow 
because when he wasn't here, you could see the tissue kind of pressed up against the skeleton. So um, that kind of wraps it up for the corals in this aquarium. You know, it's funny, we look at these tanks every single day and we keep on top of them and we keep them clean and we keep the, the glass clean, but it's not until we're ready to shoot a video that we might pop a little bit of carbon and clean off the tough spots at the edges and the corners of the aquarium. And also, turn off the water flow so we can enjoy this just really incredible top down you know I, one thing i want to say about peninsula tanks is they're more work they are more work it's a little bit more challenging to to work with a narrower strip of an aquascape than to just simply kind of stack things against the wall. But then you end up with basically two reef tanks because we can enjoy it from both sides. And um, when you see the reflections coming around, it's just almost like a, uh, a kaleidoscope of, of colors and shapes and textures. And this has turned out to be just such a fun and awesome reef tank. Um, again, there's no tricks, just good basic fundamentals that I described earlier with the mineral balance, with the lighting, um, with uh, careful attention to nutrients. I think that's one of the, the biggest lessons that I've learned over the last year is really keeping on top of not letting the phosphates bottom out. And I know that's an issue that um, doesn't plague most aquarists uh, struggling with uh, nutrients that are too high. Um, but, uh, you know, I think the sand and just keeping things, the lack of sand, keeping things simple and just not letting anything fall behind is uh, one of the keys to success for this aquarium. I really hope you guys have enjoyed enjoyed the showcase of this aquarium because we're really, really proud of it. And in our next video, we're going to show off another peninsula style aquarium that probably has even more corals and more diversity of corals. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel. That next showcase is coming out really soon. And it's just, it's nothing but beautiful coral eye candy. And uh, you know what? One thing that we don't really do is show off the tanks under fluorescent colors and uh, you know, with any kind of colored filters like yellow or orange. But if you want to see that, smash that like button. If, if we crack 2,000 likes, we'll go out of our way to show off what these tanks look like um, under blue light and all the fluorescent corals of the corals. So I wanna thank you guys again for supporting the channel, for engaging and being part of the uh, Reef Builders Online community. And we're gonna, we're gonna reward you with another Reef Aquarium Showcase very soon. So until next time, you guys uh, enjoy your reef tanks and we'll see you again very soon.